Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So this is J. Randy Tara Borelli. He's known as one of Michael Jackson's biographers. He wrote books about him. He had a long relationship with him, but where he actually started out in was where he got his break is that he was a head of Diana Ross's fan club, I believe in Philadelphia. Okay, that, and so he had a relationship with Diana Ross. That's how he's introduced into Michael Jackson, that, you know. That's all a bunch of other stuff and stuff. But he was around Michael Jackson for a number of years, and he wrote books about him and stuff. He knew him personally. Okay, so we're, this is uh, after Michael Jackson has died and stuff, and this is him talking a little bit about... This is what's known as the Michael Jackson slurred speech recording. This is a recording that when Michael Jackson, shortly before his death... While he's under the influence of propofol, he's totally intoxicated, Dr. Murray recorded Michael Jackson speaking. But it's a real slurred speech because Michael Jackson's really out of it and stuff, right? So, J. Randy Terabrelli here is going to tell you about what he, this, what he feels about this recording and what he he gets the sense that Michael Jackson's childhood was so painful to him and you can hear it in this recording there's something about his childhood okay so let's go ahead and play a little bit of this listen to this author J. Randy Tarabir, excuse me, Tarabirelli, who knew Michael Jackson for 40 years. His biography of the king of pop is called Michael Jackson, The Magic, The Madness, The Whole Story. Mm. Randy, thanks for joining us here this morning. Like I mentioned, you, you knew Michael for uh, almost 40 years. What's your first reaction when you hear um, him in this condition uh, on these recordings? It's devastating, Chris. I mean, I think for anybody who knew Michael Jackson and cared about Michael, this is this is absolutely devastating. You know, I guess there will always be unanswered questions about Michael Jackson's life and times, but... Right, okay. There will always be unanswered questions about Michael Jackson's life and times. So even somebody that's this close to Michael Jackson, who's written biographies about him, still understands that there's something that he doesn't know. There's, there's, act, there's really something. There's something, something big actually because he's not talking about little things like small little details when, he, when he's mentioning that that there's always going to be things that we don't know what he's actually uh saying is that there's something bigger there's something that we don't get there's something that we don't understand but what we now know from this tape is that he really was a man who was tormented by a childhood that you know he felt he never had okay what we know from this tape is that he was tormented by a childhood that he never had. Okay, now, I say Michael Jackson's actual childhood, uh, while he's developing the band, the Jackson 5, I think that's a great childhood. You know, he's hanging around with his brothers, he's around his family, he's doing something really cool. You know, you go to, like, people, people, this is what kids do. Like, a lot of parents, they send their kids to school during the day, and at night they go and they do their other thing where they're training their kids. Like, this is what happens, like, there's all kinds of people out there that are going through that process. It's a very common thing to take that occurs, okay? But if you get to go out and you're playing in clubs, you're making music, and then... Uh, Michael's really good at it, so people are always telling him, you're good, you're a great singer. Okay, wh what's so bad about that? And then it's like, that he is getting uh, abused, a little bit of physical abuse has taken place, and there is some mental abuse, but the mental abuse, it's not so bad until he learns later that, that Joe wasn't his father. That's when he looks back upon that time, and it's completely lost. Because he doesn't, he looks back upon it and says, hey, I wasn't doing that with my family. Joe was using me to get his family famous, his, his fame and fortune for himself and for, and for his kids. He was really just using me. I was never part of that family, so Michael never was partaking in a family uh, event, like the, the, this process of the Jackson 5. Michael was being used because Michael was given to Joe Jackson from his old friend, Barry Gordy, because they had to get rid of that kid because Diana Ross was only 14 years old and Smokey Robinson was 18 years old. And Smokey Robinson, right at the time when Diana Ross gets pregnant with Michael, that's at the same time that Smokey Robinson is creating Motown with Barry Gordy. And Barry Gordy was not going to risk building a record company around Smokey Robinson 
with this kind of scandal lingering over his head. Because if that scandal comes out, it not only does it destroy Smokey Robinson, it destroys all of Motown, which destroys Barry Gordy. And Barry Gordy's still trying to make it. He hasn't made it in the business. Barry Gordy's not a big star until he hooks up with Smokey Robinson and then they develop Motown. Then they become rich and stuff, but they haven't made it. When Michael Jackson's born in 1958, there is no such thing. There's not even a concept. The actual name of Motown has not even been developed. There's still in the Tamla stages. Even the Motown thing, it doesn't happen until Smokey writes the song uh, Shop Around, which is the song that I say is about his uh, his uh, real life experience of getting a young Diana Ross pregnant, and then he's trying to figure out what to do, and he writes the song saying, my mama told me you better shop around to keep shop around, which is like him given an idea of you can hear in the song that that's the mentality the mindset that they were in of we need to go ahead and abandon this kid you know don't don't marry diana ross don't marry her just because you got her pregnant that's what the song shop around's about and it's like okay get rid of the kid and go you're just still young and stuff and so they get rid of the kid he writes shop around shop around is the song shop around's the one that's the big million seller song and then that's under the tamla record they still haven't made motown it's after shop around which in the reality is that Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson both understand that that song was written because Diana Ross got pregnant and he wrote a song about that event and the abandoning of the child and then they put out this song that's got that real inner uh, purity of being real and that's what the people are interested in and that and they realized it that hey, people gravitated toward this song. And then that's where I think that the actual development of the name Motown comes from is because Barry Gordy saw, you know what? The people want that real, that raw, okay? And their record label was called Tamla. What's Tamla? There's, you're not gonna feel like real and raw passion towards that name, Tamla Records. What's Tamla? Like just think about the cachet of the name Tamla. Okay, think about if Motown, if, there, if it wasn't called Motown, if it never was called Motown, if it was just called Tamla, okay? It would not hold that cachet of like Motown. Do you see the difference of just one word of the labeling of the record company, Tamla Records? If everybody came out and if they were like, oh, I listen to the Tamla sound, the Tamla sound, okay, that's that's not cool. That doesn't sound cool. Okay, but when you say, oh, yeah, I like the Motown sound, that's fucking cool. You see how it, you feel it in your soul and you connect to it? Okay, so they learn that from the abandoning of Michael. They write the song Shop Around about it. And then because of that, that's the song that sells a million records and then helps them to develop Motown. So the whole process of Michael being abandoned also helped in the development of actually Motown records. There's a lot that took place because of this situation and stuff, right? But so Michael Jackson is abandoned as a child. He's given away. He doesn't know it while he's, he's happy. As a, as, a, as a kid, he's happy. He's in the Jackson family, thinks he's part of the Jackson family. He's going to Motown, singing and dancing. Listen to the way he sings and the way he moves and dances. The kid's a happy kid. The kid's enjoying his life. But at the time then, they signed to Motown. They're starting to make it. They moved to LA. That's when Diana Ross has the opportunity to tell Michael the true story that she's actually his mother, that he's not part of the Jackson family. Now, she's doing that for herself because she's carrying this burden. She's got the kids come back to her. She's, she wants to tell the kid, I'm your mother. You know, she wants to, uh, she's so proud of the kid too. The kid could sing and dance and, and that's the child of her and Smokey, who, which she was in love with Smokey. So there was one child spawned off of her love of Smokey, there was a child that was spawned and she had to abandon the child. But when the child comes back, she's feeling all this joy. And she's so you know that she told him, which I say that that's what the song Billie Jean is about. That Diana Ross is actually Billie Jean. The song is actually about Diana Ross informing Michael Jackson that she was his real mother when Michael Jackson is about 10, 11 years old and they moved to LA and they're living in Diana Ross's house. You would see that that would be the timeline of how the events would occur when Diana would inform him. Right. So then at that time, now Michael's like living between two family. He realized he's not really a Jackson, but he's living with the Jacksons and he's being called a Jacksons and he's the head of the Jackson five. So he's holding up to the tradition of what the Jackson five is. Right. But now he's got Diana and he's trying to like be like he's trying to be connected to her. OK, but Diana, <clears throat> she's kept 
getting in relationships and having other children. So every time that Diana gets married and has a child, Michael's like sitting back feeling like, hey, look at here I am being pushed out of your family again. Okay, this is what the development of Michael Jackson. So where J. Randy Terabrelli is saying you can feel that Michael, that the heartache of what he had from his lost childhood, what the real understanding of the lost childhood is, is that Michael realized that he was abandoned as a child. Okay, so we're going to play a little bit more of this. Let's listen. And, you know, we've seen this in a lot of celebrities over the years. You know, fame corrupts and it ruins a child's sense of self, but never more so. I think then in the case of Michael Jackson. And also what strikes me, Chris, is that while many people over the years may have felt that Michael was exaggerating this narrative of, of a lost childhood for maybe the purposes of publicity or career advancement, I think that we see now that even in this highly intoxicated state, it really was the main focus of his life, the, the pain and the hurt that he felt at not having a childhood. See how it's see J. Randy Ter Terabrelli, he can sense it from this recording of Michael that the main the main pain and hurt in Michael Jackson's life is what he's talking about, about this not having a childhood story that that's what the slurred speech recording revealed. And it was clear to see like here's somebody that's really close to Michael and J. Randy Terabrelli is saying, man, that lost childhood thing was serious to Michael. It was serious because here he is in a highly intoxicated state and he's expressing his pain and it's about this lost childhood stuff. That's what it's about. But J. Randy Terabrelli doesn't know that Michael's not part of the Jackson family because the one thing that you know over anything about Michael Jackson is that he's part of the Jackson family. <laughs> It's like it's like the one thing that you would like bet all of your money on. It's like if somebody wanted to make a bet about like talk about facts about Michael Jackson's life, right? The single most fact that you would bet on and guarantee that's proof and and it's true and stuff is that Michael's a Jackson and that uh, he's he was always he was raised in he was raised in Gary, Indiana and stuff. But the fact of the matter is that he was given to them as a baby. Like Diana has the baby and gives the baby to the Jacksons. Like as soon as it possibly could have occurred, right? So Michael Jackson's whole life is raised as a Jackson, but when he finds out that he was abandoned as a child. And you got Diana Ross clinging on to him. That's where the whole relationship is because she's feeling, not only does she feel guilty of abandoning him, she also is highly like respecting and feeling the joy of, the, of Michael being the child of her and Smokey. There's this connection because she's so infatuated with Smokey Robinson, right? And that that's the child of her and Smokey that they spawn this child and look at how incredible this kid is, right? So Diana's feeling like, man, if me and Smokey would have got together and had kids, what would have all those kids have been like, right? And she doesn't have to wonder because here's the one kid that they did have and the kids got all the talent. So there's that's the weird thing about what Diana, the way she treats him and stuff, because not only is she feeling guilty of abandoning him, but she's also super admired of this kid because that's the one child that came from Diana and her, her real love Smokey that those two artists and shit right so now the this is the Michael Jackson slurred speech recording and stuff right they have it written out here and stuff and when you hear I would think that most of you people have heard this it's really slow and Michael's just really intoxicated but so I'm just gonna like see the children are depressed okay I'm just going to read this, okay? I'm going to read through it because it's, I usually play it, but he's so drugged out, it's hard to hear what he's saying. And I'm just going to read to you what he's actually saying. So he says here, uh, children are depressed. In, in those hospitals, no game room, no movie theater. They're sick because they're depressed. Okay, they're sick. Okay, listen to the words of that. They're sick because they're depressed. Okay, they're not sick because they're sick. He's saying that they're sick because they're depressed. Okay, so now let's read more. And what are what are they actually depressed about? He says their mind is depressing them. Their mind. This is a mental depression. See, Michael Jackson is perfectly illustrating what's occurring here. Okay, and the children that he's talking about. Let's listen to what their act, what their actual real problem is, and why why is Michael so connected to these children with this problem, and why is he so eloquently being able to describe these kids' pain while he's totally intoxicated? Why is this the thing that he's spilling the beans? This is the thing tormenting his soul. 
now let's let's go on and continue this what he's actually talking about here just like j randy terrell Tara Braley said when he saw this he realized that that michael jackson's lost childhood thing that was serious that that's a much bigger story. But J. Randy Tara Burley doesn't understand that that whole thing about what's occurring is that Michael was abandoned as a child. That that's what he had to realize. When he gets to Motown, thinking he had made this great accomplishment with his family and they're the Jackson Five, it gets stolen from him as Diana tells him the truth and reveals to him that he's an abandoned child. He was given away as a child. Okay, so... They're, uh, they're sick because they're depressed. Their mind is depressing them. I want to give them that. I care about them, them angels. God wants me to do it. God wants me to do it. I'm going to do it, Conrad. I know you would, Conrad says. Michael then says, don't have enough hope. No more hope. That's the next generation that's going to save our planet, starting with We'll talk about it. United States, Europe, Prague, my babies. They walk around with no mother. They walk around with no mother. Okay, so Michael's saying that these children are depressed and they're, they're, they're sick because their, their mind is depressing them. And why is their mind depressing them? It's because they walk around with no mother. Okay, if Michael Jackson is part of the Jackson family and he's got Catherine... He's always talked about how much he loves Catherine. He's raised with both parents. There's Catherine and stuff, right? But Michael is like super connected to these children and their depression and their mind is depressing them. And what's the real reason of what's their, what's their problem is they walk around with no mother. They drop them off. They leave a psychological degradation of that. They reach out to me. Please take me with you. Okay, the psychological degradation of that. See how Michael is so explaining this, this understanding of these specific, this is a specific children of what he's talking about. These children that are depressed because their mind is depressing them and what's their mental depression occurring from is because they walk around with no mother. They drop them off. They leave a psychological degradation of that. So when Michael Jackson realized that he was abandoned, it left this psychological degradation of that event occurring, that he was given away as a child. When he's given away, there's no guarantee that he's going to become the Jackson 5. Michael Jackson realized that that was a fluke thing that occurred, that he ended up with Joe, and Joe ended up working it the way he did. Michael understands that once he was given away, he was being given away. It didn't matter what family he ended up with. He's given, he was being given away. They, they made a choice to get rid of that kid. Michael had to live with that, and it left a psychological the degradation of that. That's what happened. So then it's... Okay, let me get to this. Okay, so then he says... Okay, uh, they, they say... They reach out to me. Please take me with you. And... Uh, Murray says, mm-hmm, and Michael says, I want to do that for them. Murray says, mm-hmm, and Michael says, I'm going to do that for them. That will be remembered more than my performances. My performances will be up there helping my children and always be my dream. I love them. I love them because I didn't have a childhood. Okay, so now those kids that he's talking about, he's talking about kids that were abandoned by their parents. They walk around because they have no mother, which leaves a psychological degradation. And so Michael now is telling you that his pain of what he has is connected to those children. What were the children of what he just talked about? Children because they were, they were dropped off. They have no mother, and it leaves the psychological degradation of that, right? I love them because I didn't have a childhood. I had no, ch I had no childhood. I feel their pain. I feel their hurt. See how specific it is in Michael referencing what children it is that he actually feels their pain and their hurt and this is in this in this recording. He's specifically talking about children with no mother and because they got dropped off as abandoned as children it left a psychological degradation on them and Michael Jackson is connected to those specifically those children. And then it says Michael says I can deal with it. Okay, but he can't deal with it. 
obviously he's drugged out of his mind he's living like peter pan he he's having to live with all this his whole life no but he couldn't tell anybody he had to live under the umbrella of being the jacksons in american dream while he's telling his true story in the song billy jean and billy jean is one of clearly one of the uh, most recognized greatest songs of all time and he's got all these fans admiring him but nobody understands him you're going to tell me that Michael Jackson can he can deal with that no he couldn't deal with that that's why he's turned to this drugs and the other thing is like think about Michael here talking about the children how much he cares for the children okay but you got to remember Michael's got all three of his children in the house at the time while he's uh, being uh, doped up by Conrad Murray so while he's fully intoxicated and uh, out of it on drugs, Michael's got his children in the house. Okay, so if Michael actually had this connection to children, to just period, to children, okay, there's no way that he would have put himself in this kind of highly intoxicated state with his children in the house. So he's totally neglecting his children, the time and relationship that he should have building with his children. He's not doing that because he's got this relationship with Dr. Murray and he's being a drug addict. He's neglecting his children. So Michael Jackson does not have this connection to uh, caring for children. What he does have is this uh, psychological degradation and this connection of being abandoned as a child and he's got this connection to these children like that and that's where his pain come from comes from and he says I had no childhood I feel their pain I feel their hurt I can deal with it heal the world we are the world will you be there the lost children these are are the songs I've written because I hurt you know I hurt I hurt I hurt. Now, if his hurt was so drawn from these children and stuff, then why would he do that to his children? Why would he neglect his children and he, he died? And so now his children are having to deal with the reality of their parent dying from an overdose and stuff. If his, if his real passion was towards children and caring for them, then you know that he would care for his own personal children more than any of those kids. And he would damn sure well make sure that his kids are not abandoned that way. But he did not do that. He left his kids like alone while he's being drugged up and stuff. So what he's really, what he proves there is that it's not children that he cares about. What it is, is his own personal problem with the realization that he was abandoned as a child. And because of that, he does feel this connection to the children are out there that are having to deal with the same thing that he, like he said, he says, I feel their pain. I feel their hurt. He's definitely connected to those children. But what are the specific children that he's connected to? These children, they walk around with no mother. They dropped them off and it left a psychological degradation on him. This is exactly the story about what I'm telling you. It, it, it explains it all right here that J. Randy Terabrelli clearly saw that this recording illustrated Michael Jackson's real pain and the pain that came from something in his childhood. But he says we might not ever really know the real story of Michael Jackson's life. Yeah, you people never understood because the one most single fact, a provable, provable fact about Michael Jackson, and he's part of, he's a Jackson. That was so nobody. Nobody, because you, because we know he was raised in that family, so nobody ever could understand the the part that Michael's not a Jackson. No, it's actually that he was abandoned by Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson. Because, like I said, I've done the investigation. Smokey Robinson met Barry Gordy in August of 1957. Okay, so it's just a few months after that event occurs that Michael's conceived. Because Michael's born in August of 1958. When you actually look at the dates and look at how they line up, and then what you find out is that Diana Ross is only 14 years old when she abandons Michael. And you find out that that's the reason, that's the motive for the whole thing, is that Smokey was building Motown with Barry Gordy, and then Diana Ross got pregnant because, and then, like I said, I, sh I show the evidence, I've shown it so many times, that Diana Ross was literally sleeping in Smokey Robinson's house. And not only was she sleeping in his house, she was in love with him. She says that in the Arsenio Hall interview. She says that she's sleeping in Smokey because, because she's best friends with Smokey Robinson's niece. And that allows her to sleep over at her friend Sharon, which is Smokey Robinson's niece. Diana sleeps over at Sharon's house. But 
that's Smokey's house. Sharon lives with Smokey Robinson because Smokey Robinson's mother died when he was 10 years old. So Smokey Robinson's older sister, who's 17 years older than Smokey Robinson, and then she had a bunch of kids, she moved into that house and raised Smokey from that time on. Okay, so her children are just a few years younger than Smokey. She has some children around that age. Like I said, she's 17 years older than Smokey and she's got a bunch of kids. And so her children, one of them is the same age as Diana, and Diana was best friends with that girl, Sharon. And because of that, and Diana lives on the same street, so Diana can sleep over at Sharon's house. But not only is Diana sleeping in that house, she's in love with Smokey Robinson. That's what she's proclaiming, that Smokey was her first love. So. When you go back and do the investigation, what you find out is at the time that Michael Jackson was conceived, you find out that Diana Ross is sleeping in Smokey Robinson's house and she's in love with him and that that's the time that Smokey Robinson met Barry Gordy and they start to develop Motown together, that Smokey actually starts to record songs and get them on the radio. And then that's the motive or where Diana realizes, okay, first she's just trying to hook up with Smokey, but then when she realizes that she's screwed them up, she's messed up their career and she understands and stuff, then that's the motive to go ahead and abandon the baby. And then what happens right after that? Diana gets into starts the primates at 15 years old. Right after she abandons the child, she starts a band. And what happens with that band and stuff? They end up going to Motown and becoming the Supremes. And what? how does Diana get to the head of the Supremes? Because she's already made this deal with Barry Gordy to abandon her child. The song that she does her audition at the at Motown is, I want my baby, there goes my baby. That's the song that she sang. That's the song that she sang. It's like, this is not just coincidence. This is clearly the understanding and the explanation of the true story of Michael Jackson. This is what happened to him. And like I said, all you gotta do is listen to my, listen to me show you all the evidence, how everything aligns perfectly. Cause when you go, you just go look at the Jacksons. When Michael Jackson is born at that time, Joe Jackson is not training his children to be musicians. Cause it's still a couple years after that, that, uh, that uh, Tito breaks the guitar string. Okay, and the story of breaking the guitar string is that Tito's secretly playing Joseph's guitar. Okay, which I say that's not what happened, that Joseph started to train him. But the story they tell you is that he's secretly playing the guitar. They're not telling you that uh, Joe's training him, that there's, there's some other stuff going on and they're misleading. What about Michael Jackson's name? They say that Michael Jackson was named at the hospital by, by Catherine's mother, that they, that, that she names him Michael. Is that, is that a, a logical story? But is it, is it, or is it more logical that that was not their kid? So they never were thinking about naming their kid. They're just thinking about getting this kid. They're not thinking about naming the kid. Okay. That's why the cover up comes out that Catherine's mother names Michael in the hospital because the reality of the situation was they it was not their kid. They weren't sitting up at night and saying, what are we going to name our kid? That wasn't what happened. But when they get the kid and Diana, I believe, names him Michael, and then they say, okay, well, on the birth certificate, let's, let's put Joseph's name as the middle name, okay? So that's how you put the cover up. And when you look back, Joseph's got a number of boys before Michael, but none of them had Joseph's name in there. So if, if the name was of any of importance, wouldn't one of the other child children before that have gotten Joseph's name? But it didn't happen. That's what I'm saying. When you actually look at the real events that occurred, when you follow Michael Jackson and you see what you see is that, yeah, you know what? There's a bunch of problems. Because when Mike, when uh, when Michael comes into the house, that's the time that Joseph starts stops working at the steel mill. But Joseph doesn't train his kids at that time. Joseph reforms his band, the Falcons. Joseph, because and think about the reality: if he just got this kid from Barry Gordy, then now he's thinking, "Oh, this is my chance," because he's not training his kids, and he doesn't see like that the kids have all this talent. He would have to train them to be musicians. It's a long-term thing. He doesn't know how to do that because the kids are not great singers. He doesn't see the talent in them. He's he's not developing a band. That's not what's occurring. So at the time that he gets Michael, coincidentally, Joseph stops working at the steel mill, and Joseph starts to build a band. Because he's thinking, I've got this connection to Barry Gordy. I'm going to make a band and I'm going to go sign with Barry Gordy. That, and that's the reality. But Joseph doesn't make it. So after that, he starts to train his kids. That's why I think he starts to train Tito then to play the guitar, which is what would be the more proper situation, that Tito secretly is playing Joseph Jackson's guitar 
He's secretly playing in that little house. He see, and you can't just pick up a guitar. You don't just learn how to play it. You need to learn some chords. You need to learn some stuff. It's an instrument. You just don't pick it up. If you pick it up, you start playing with it. It's just a kid playing with the guitar. Really quick, Catherine would have said, you don't play with that because he would have just been playing with it. Catherine would have stopped that because you would hear a guitar being played with. Catherine, would, it's a small house. You're going to tell me she didn't hear him playing with the guitar. She instantly would have said, you don't touch Joseph's guitar. He'll beat the shit out of you. He might beat the shit out of me. Okay, so she would have stopped that really quick. But no, they tell the story that Tito's playing it and he's actually getting pretty good and he breaks the string. And that's how Joseph then makes the discovery that the kids have some musical talent. But what's more of a logical uh, when you see the real story that Michael has been given to them. Joseph tried to make it in the band. He didn't make it. So then he would turn to his kids because still at that time, Michael's still young. Michael hasn't shown this gift of being this great singer. He still hasn't shown it. Right. So Joseph now starts to train his kids. How how to play guitar he's trying to figure out what how do i do this because he's got the connection to barry gordy he's trying to do something so then a short time after that then michael shows the talent as being the singer as soon as michael shows the talent what does joseph do he puts a band together and they start going out on the road he wasn't on the road and putting a band together with his kids before michael showed the talent that's it wasn't happening it was because it all spawned from the event of michael being given to them Okay, so then Joe's working him and Michael's hustling, but Michael, that's fine as a kid. Nothing wrong with him going out and doing that stuff. But then when he goes to, and he makes it to Motown, so he's thinking they've done this great achievement with his family. He's got all his brothers. They're thinking he's the head of the band. That would have felt so good for Michael Jackson. He would have thought like, man, Joseph's got to be so proud of me. And look at me, I'm leading my brothers that we've all like made it now to Motown. Michael would have, that would have been like the greatest thing. Instead of Michael looking back upon that saying his childhood was so rotten, he would have looked back upon that as such a great adventure and what a great journey and process they had to go to to make it to Motown. But no, when he gets to Motown and they move to L.A., when he's, when he's got all this great things that have occurred, then Diana takes that from him. And then Michael walks around with the psychological degradation of realizing that he was abandoned as a child. And he ha now he's got no mother because Catherine's not really his mother. And Diana's out here raising other children and building her own family. And this perfectly illustrates the pain of what Michael Jackson had to walk around with all of that time. And when he's totally drugged out of his mind a very short time before his death, this is when he's expressing the real pains and the feelings of what's going on. He's telling you right there, this is my pain. I feel their pain. I feel their hurt. The kids walk around with no mother and it leaves a psychological, they leave, they drop them off and it leaves a psychological degradation on them. This is exactly what he's talking about. This is the story. But you people have to get over the one simple, most provable fact about what you thought you knew about Michael Jackson, that he is a Jackson. It's That's wrong. That was the one thing that nobody ever could make the discovery of because it was the single most fact that we knew about Michael Jackson. It turns out that that's wrong. And when you understand that that's wrong, now you can understand Michael Jackson's life.